and as Clay says, Uber is clearly transforming the taxi business, but is it disrupting the taxi business? He says, according to the theory, the answer is no. Uh, Uber is an, uh, an outlier, and as such, we do not have a universal way to account for such atypical outcomes. So we've been analyzing this, in this to say, well, can the theory be uh, better applied uh, or, or understood through a jobs be done lens? So the question we ask is, why is Uber considered an outlier and how uh, is its success best explained? So let's take a look at this one more time. What we've learned is that, or what we believe is the language of innovation, uh, disruptive innovation is a bit unclear and the term disruptive innovation is vague. So we wanted to add some additional detail here and, and uh, definition to help bring to light how the process actually works. So first we're gonna describe the disruptive strategy, which we talked about already, right? It's a product that you've decided to put in the market that's getting the job done worse and you're charging less. So that product is pursuing a disruptive strategy. All right, so again, disruptive strategy describes a strategy employed for a specific product in a given situation. Then it's the concept of a disruptive technology. Not all products include disruptive technologies. In other words, a technology platform that facilitates or enables the process of disruption to occur. Product may not be uh, amenable to improvement. It may be constrained to operate at low function. And if that's the case, then the process of disruption cannot occur. The third aspect here is the actual process of disruption, which describes a series of products initially employing a disruptive strategy and technology, uh, which is improved over time to eventually get the job done better and cheaper than traditional solutions. So with that in mind, let's, let's redefine a disruptive innovation. The way we want to say this is that disruptive innovation is a product that completes the process of disruption. So let's go back and ask the question, is Uber a disruptive innovation? Well, right up front, we can conclude no, because Uber is not a product. Uber is actually a company, right? And so therefore, it's not a disruptive innovation. Um, Uber Pool, on the other hand, is the only Uber product that's designed to get the job done worse and more cheaply. So Uber Pool really is the only candidate for this analysis of whether or not Uber is disruptive. So let's reframe the question then. Is Uber Pool a disruptive innovation? In other words, is it a product that took root at the bottom of the market and then moved up relentlessly over time, displacing competitors at the high end? And I think we can pretty quickly see that Uber Pool employed a disruptive strategy aimed at the bottom of the market, but the product was not conceived around a disruptive technology. And so therefore, the mechanism for moving up market is not available to them, making Uber Pool a uh, innovation that is not disruptive. So when we consider all that, let's come back to the other question. Well, how is Uber success best explained? And I think it's best explained by understanding that they are pursuing uh, the market from all angles. They're attacking taxi business from, from each angle. Uh, they're pursuing multiple strategies at the same time. Uh, they are targeting under and over segments with differentiated strategies, with disruptive strategies, with dominant strategies. They're even effectively deploying a discrete strategy, charging people more money for more service when demand does not meet uh, 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 overseas uh, supply. And non-consumption is also being addressed with this less expensive Uber pool as well. So they're bringing all these factors into play. And I think that by uh, analyzing a market through this lens, we can think about uh, disruptive innovations a bit differently. 